Uh, hello again. I want to start today by asking you a question. We know that PCOS is very much a uh, familial syndrome. In fact, we think that it's passed down through the family in about 84% of the cases. We also know that PCOS causes infertility. So how is it that PCOS has survived down throughout all these years? While you're thinking about that, let me make an observation. A long time ago, when I was a young gynaecologist, we didn't really have uh, any treatments at all uh, for infertility. And I ran a clinic uh, for women with uh, PCOS and I particularly saw a group of PCOS women with amenorrhea. Now, because it was such a long time ago, those were the days when we actually used to examine women and I, uh, one of my uh, duties was to examine the ovaries with a vaginal examination so we could estimate their size. The observation was many of these women returned uh, months later and they were either pregnant or they were having regular periods. This in a group of women with PCOS and amenorrhea. This got me thinking about reflex ovulations. Now reflex ovulations happen in animals, in voles, in rabbits, in ferrets, in camels. Could this be connected? These animals have a reflex ovulation following intercourse. Now how does this happen? Well, there is a factor called nerve growth factor, NGF, that is present in seminal fluid. So could it be this nerve growth factor which is known to stimulate LH? Could this be the cause of a reflex ovulation? Well, maybe it is in animals, but we know that males very rarely have influence on females in the human race. So, what about the evidence in humans? Well, as far as ovarian manipulation is concerned, this sounds a, a better bet to cause a, a reflex ovulation, as in the example of the PCOS women with amenorrhea. We know that there's no influence of uh, intercourse uh, on ovulation in the human. If there were, it would be uh, very difficult to control uh, any fertility issues. Now, the question is, have PCOS women used ovarian manipulation to ovulate during an unovulatory period? Well, women with PCOS have a much more sympathetic activity than women who have normal ovaries. And they've been proved to have more nerve growth factor. So maybe this is what's causing the ovulations that ensue after uh, ovarian drilling or after wedge resection. While working in uh, Amsterdam, uh, there was a very bright uh, doctor there uh, called uh, Maria Lisa Hendricks, and she was doing a PhD. And we set up work there, uh, first of all, to uh, examine the endocrinological effects of ovarian drilling versus a control group of PCOS women who had just a diagnostic laparoscopy and in brief the findings were that in all the cases testosterone, androstenedione, AMH and inhibin B were all decreased following the procedure but this decrease was much more emphasized in those undergoing the ovarian drilling but however it did happen 
with the mild ovarian manipulation that we get on a diagnostic laparoscopy. The next work uh, that was set up was to examine ovarian manipulation in women with PCOS and non-PCOS. The way we did the manipulation was by using uh, an ultrasound vaginal probe and manipulating the ovaries uh, on each side for a short standard time. When we looked at those results, then the LH was reduced very significantly along with the uh, subsequent changes in pulsatility in the group with PCOS. But in the control group, there were no changes whatsoever. So this again suggests a neuronal pathway never been described, maybe uh, by reducing the sympathetic tone in PCOS women acting through kispeptin and lowering LH levels which consequently may cause uh, 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 the onset of ovulation in these cases. So is this the way that PCOS has survived over the years? Maybe. From a practical point of view what I do suggest is that you do examine and palpate the ovaries in women with PCOS amenorrhea and that would be very interesting to see how many of them would ovulate or even conceive after this simple manoeuvre. Thank you.